Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. I'm just doing this quick unboxing right here of uh, this thing I end up getting, which is the uh, Revo K101, I believe. And this is essentially, it is an emulation machine, I guess, but this is supposed to be a kind of upgraded Game Boy Advance in a way, although not officially by Nintendo, but I actually saw a video that uh, My Life in Gaming did over getting the best quality out of the Game Boy game. Um, consoles so i'll try to remember to link that down below in the description and i just want to do real casual unboxing of this so if you're expecting some super professional no you're not gonna get that uh so anyways i ended up ordering it from amazon it was 90 bucks uh this is came in this you know just pretty general packaging which no big deal and look i actually brought an exacto knife this time around to this unboxing so i came somewhat prepared we're gonna go ahead close that up here and let's check this out yeah. Alright, there we go. We get a box inside of a box, so that's pretty cool. Ooh, okay, there's the nice box. There we go. Alright, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just move this on over to the floor because we're not going to need that. And that is what the console is supposed to look like. So as you can see, pretty reminiscent of, you know, obviously a kind of a actually Game Boy Micro, except it's not going to be, you know, the same size. It's pretty neat, though. So we can go ahead, open this thing up. Slowly. And there we go. So first off, we have this right here, which these are instructions. Here we go. How to use the re- I like how they just like cut this out manually. Charge the device firstly, use the Panasonic converter, format the micro SD card, all right? Uh, download and extract the cheat database, download and extract the game pick collection, find the root named K system, make a folder for it, insert the game pick and cheat directories in the K system folder, drag and drop homebrew some ROMs, insert mi a micro SD card into the K card, insert K card into the Revo 101. All right, and we have to actually go to the website right here to set everything up. So kind of want to uh, document this to see how it would be. Let's go ahead, take this all off. I actually have a, a micro SD card here with a few ROMs that I loaded onto it. Um, I was hoping everything would just be built in there and it would just be pretty plug and play. It looks like we're gonna have to download some files, which no big deal there. So, so far it looks like a little cheap Chinese knockoff in a way, uh, which I was expecting, but so far it seems to be cool enough. Uh, oh, that's for the brightness, all right. Uh, let's see how we can, oh, turn on using the power on the side. There we go. Ooh, there is something going on there in the corner. Oh, okay. Looks like, well, there's nothing really coming up just because it's it's mostly white screen. Or, oh, oh, no. What the, hold on. Well, let me see what's going on with this. First, I'm going to take this all off. There we go, okay. I saw some stuff in the corners here and I was kind of worried, but we just took that off and it's fine. So kind of on a, a first look right here, as you can see, that is the screen. D-pad, A, B, X, Y, start, select, easy enough. Power's right there, L and R right there. Uh, has a mini USB cable and it looks like a extension one, AV out, which AV out from what I know is composite only. Uh, it has a rechargeable battery, and then this thing looks like a Game Boy Advance cartridge, and this is, so, so to quote, well, to um, kind of paraphrase what uh, My Life in Gaming said, uh, you might think that you're going to buy this and you're going to get a free Game Boy Advance um, flash cart. You're not. Uh, this is only for use with the Revo system, so this will not work in the Game Boy Advance, which is fine. You know, I bought this for the system itself, but what you're supposed to do is let me take my SD card right here. I'm supposed to pop this in, so you go like that. Oh, that's easy enough. Pops in there, but of course we need to load the appropriate firmware files onto this, so what I'm going to do is going to pop this back into my computer. We're going to download everything that we'll need. And uh, let's go ahead and, before I do that, pop this back in, finish unboxing this fully just to see what we get. So we're going to get all that. I'm going to open this up right here, and that's just more spacing stuff. So first off, oh nice! It has screen protectors, that is so cool! It has screen protectors, and it has a little uh, screwdriver to end up taking this thing off right here, which is really cool. Oh, uh, it also says GBA hardware clone. It is a GBA hardware clone, admittedly. <laughs> um, except completely, uh, I'll show you all, it is, it's quite different. Um, looks like it has these little pads right here, so if you open up the system, you can replace the pads. And that's the idea, I guess, that's pretty neat. Uh, of course, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's mono, it's not even stereo, unfortunately. 
uh, mini USB cable just in case you don't have a million of those and a charging port so that's all cool I actually don't know if I have one that is super accessible right now so I'm actually gonna pull this thing out and I'll be hooking it up to charge at one point so I will be using this I will be but let me go ahead and take all that out uh, you know we can just leave that there it's fine and I will use those at one point for sure uh, because I mean hey free accessories so might as well use them even though technically I paid for them but that's cool that they actually go out of their way to include all that uh, it does include an SD card for anybody that might be wondering so you will have to supply your own SD card but it has everything else to get you started so what we're gonna do with that we're going to go ahead rebox this thing and I'm gonna follow the instructions on here see what's going on and uh, get this all set up all right, so uh, we have the system right here, and uh, what I ended up doing is, uh, as I showed you all, just this is the little, you know, I kind of thought of this. I think they just really put this in for nostalgic purposes because I don't know why they couldn't have just made it so you pop the micro SD card inside of this. Also, another thing, I end up noticing that this is the uh, K, the Revo K101 Plus. So I don't know if they made a, an original one, they made a plus, I'm assuming they did, but I did get the plus model, which is pretty nice. Uh, just put the SD card in there, tried booting it up one time and it does work. So what you will need to do is you need to just follow these instructions, which um, I'll say this, they aren't the best just because you go to the website and you see the same instructions and you actually had to look around for the uh, the cheat database so uh, I downloaded the cheat database that gave me they gave me a bunch of trouble just because uh, it kept flagging as a virus so I just had to tell my antivirus like 80 times to say it's not a virus uh, copy that over uh, game pick collection copied it over that was pretty easy you also have to make a folder called case system copy them into there and then you can just drag and drop the ROMs in there so um, I'll go ahead and show you all this right here uh, so we'll go ahead also got to show you all there is a volume rocker on the side so let's check this thing out so let's go ahead turn this on it's turned on right there gives you the splash screen which is you know pretty cool then you have all this right here and uh, let's see what it gives us hopefully you all can see that so actually just kind of looking at this um, let me see if I can okay there I can switch the options so some of the options it give, gives me English I got simplified Chinese traditional Chinese Japanese Korean German French Spanish what about the display LCD scaling is 4 by 3 LCD brightness TV scaling and TSC oh okay so you can just change up right there to be all like do you want to display on the TV or do you want to display on the LCD monitor uh, or uh, screen and so far the screen here is really nice too. The keypad, key sound, I'm going to turn that off because I just find that to be a little bit annoying. The real time clock, you can end up turning on. Neato. All right, I'll go ahead and enable the uh, the real time clock and I'm going to set this up here real quick. So it is 2016 and I know this video is going to come out later. Uh, we just actually ended up doing mod chat, so this is the same night that I'm doing this. But let's see, it is a Sunday, and let me see. Close enough, there we go. All right, file filter, game all, save off, mp3, well, I'm, I don't really care about those files. So there we go, miscellaneous, the boot up screen, GBA splash screen, I actually do want that. Wake up mode is normal, or AB, um, auto sleep countdown, so you can have an auto sleep on there. Let's go ahead, go back, save the settings. And what about help? All right, uh, out of fire switch, some other stuff. So neat, you could also change it between NTSC and PAL, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead, go back here. And I have a few games. So first off, let's go ahead, try uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. So I just go ahead, hit A, loads up the game. That's cool, all right, looks good so far. Let's see, is that maxed out? Oh no, okay. I didn't even fully max it out. So I like to try this game normally, like in an emulator or something, just because this game has a, so not the best sound quality, of course, uh, but this game actually has a full motion video. So let's go ahead and load that up. Sure. I'm just trying to get a nice viewing angle for you all.
Let's see, yeah, that's working so far, so I don't know if there's a soft reset on here. But let me do some actual gameplay as well, too. So if I just tap that, it does nothing. If I fully turn it off, there we go, shuts down. Let me go ahead, turn this back on. So it looks like I'm going to have to hold this to turn it on. And you can, again, you can disable the splash screen if you want to. I'm just going to keep it enabled for now. Let's try another Game Boy Advance game. So these are some games that I have and I enjoy playing, but Nightmare in Dreamland. Let's check this out. If you haven't played this game, such a fun Kirby game. So let's see if I still got it here. Kind of like bending it a bit at an awkward angle like this is optimal for me but you all can't see that very well um but no it looks good so far and it's very comfortable this is essentially really what i was expecting a lot of people this was this is pretty recommended as a uh, alternative to game boy advance just because you know emulation on it seems to be pretty nice and then on top of that um it, just, it seems to be doing a good job overall it's comfortable it's in my opinion the the price seems just about right um it's easier than, like, for example, Game Boy, well, uh, modding an original Game Boy Advance to have a uh, LCD screen, which a lot of people like to do. Um, I did have that that idea planned, but I still need to get my hands on the actual screen, because uh, I have the front-lit screens for the uh, SP, but I don't have a SP with a truly backlit screen. A lot of people also like to do that just because, I don't know, most people agree that even though the SP has the better screen and it is rechargeable, the uh, original Game Boy Advance just has the best feel to it. It's kind of like this thing. Oh, cool. All right. Ah, damn it. Press A. You know, it doesn't help when, like, I, I was playing on the Xbox recently and A is this button. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so end up saving. Well, it should have saved at least. Oh, I need that. All right, let's go ahead and turn this thing off, turn it back on. I'm going to see if I can access my save file to see if it acts like a uh, regular Game Boy Advance. All right, so let's go ahead and go down to Kirby again. Load this up. Yes, all right, cool. And there we go, all my products are saved, so... If you're wondering um, how it saves your progress, because sometimes you have to save externally or you have to like reset the system or whatever. No, it acts like a uh, regular Game Boy system, so it's like you play on the actual cartridge, which is pretty nice. So we can go ahead and open this thing up right here. And I want to try some of the other games. So um, this game I play, I still have it around here, but uh, I played it quite a bit. Um, Looney Tunes Alert. So I decided to load this up. Thankfully, through uh, backwards compatibility on the Game Boy Advance, it should work. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is going to be fun to try and play around with. Alright, cool. So, Game Boy Color games do indeed work. Hopefully. And sure. I'll just put D. Alright. All right. Okay. Uh, I feel like I feel like the game is playing slow right now because I don't remember it being this damn slow. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Yeah. No. This is this is pretty slow. Honestly, the Game Boy Color. So. Uh, first test of the Game Boy Color, not that successful. That's the only ROM I had on there for Game Boy Color, though. So, 
Uh, you might want to be careful with that if you're trying to play other games. It's definitely more optimized for the Game Boy Advance. Kind of disappointing, though. And let's end up trying. So I got some uh, Sega Master System games because I've been uh, on that a bit. But let's go ahead and try um, Sonic the Hedgehog. Ah, it has the Game Boy logo on there. So that's not for the actual games. Interesting. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Actually, that's... That's not horrible, like... The thing is, I don't know if this game, uh, I don't know if this handles, uh, Sega Genesis games, that's why I put the Master System version on here, which is obviously an inferior product, but it's been a while since I tried it on Master System, so I don't know if it's supposed to be handling like this. Oh my god, okay, that feels a bit normal now. <laughs> oh, don't die, dude. Okay, and this is at the point where it is, it, I don't think it's the game being limited to 8-bit. This is just, this is also just slow right here. Alright, that was pretty horrible, admittedly. <laughs> so, uh, let's go ahead and turn this thing off, turn it back on, and let's uh, check out some of the other stuff here. Also, just for giggles, I'd like to uh, check out the boot times without all this stuff, so let's go ahead... Um, miscellaneous now is, yeah. Let's turn off the boot screen, let's turn off the GB splash screen and save settings. I'm gonna turn the system off again, turn it back on. Okay, so cool. Boots up much faster, which is going to be expected. Uh, let's check out Sonic Spinball. Alright, there's no way it's that slow. Again, I think that's just the emulator. I, yeah. The pinball game has to be fast, so let's actually check this out. Oh, oh god. <laughs> I, 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 did. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. For real? Alright. Yeah, this is... I've been playing a bunch of real pinball recently as well, like actually going to some arcades and playing pinball, and this is... I don't want to say this is pretty horrible, but this is... this is... this is pretty horrible. <laughs> Alright, so... So far we can at least check and see that, uh... Game Boy Advance it seems to handle pretty well, so if you want a good Game Boy Advance system, this is awesome. Uh, as for other things, I've tried the Game Boy Color, not really that good. I tried the, uh... Uh, Sega Master System, uh, not so good as well, and uh, let me look on their official website because I do have it pulled up right here. So let me just bring up some uh, info on this or about us. Let's check it out. Features. So out of all the things it can handle, it's looking it can handle Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, PC Engine, or TurboGrafx-16, Sega Master System, Sega Game Gear, Sega Genesis. Oh, see, that's why I put the Master System games on here, because I didn't know if it did Genesis or not. Uh, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. So we've tried a few of them. Let me, uh, I'll test out some other stuff at some point. I'm uh, going to get some bed for, well, yeah, God, see, I can't even talk. I'm going to get some sleep right now because I'm uh, just a tad bit tired. Now for my final thoughts and final first impressions and everything of this system and kind of my initial recommendation here because I haven't used it, you know, extensively to the point where it's like I've used it for 80 hours and can tell you every single thing about it. But at least, you know, for me delving into it and playing around with it a bit more, I want to cover a few things. First off, if you are getting this as a clone Game Boy system or as a replacement for Game Boy Advance, it's pretty awesome, not gonna lie. It's actually a pretty nice system, and I would recommend it, especially, you know, I felt like for what I paid, $90 was pretty fair because I get in the added bonus emulation as well, too, and then you can load everything off an SD card, well, micro SD card, plus on top of that, I also found out it can run original Game Boy Advance games, so that's pretty neat as well, too. If you're a complete purist and you'd rather play off the original Game Boy Advance cartridges, you can pop them in there and they play. Now, when it comes to actually loading up games, I've noticed if you load up Game Boy Advance ROMs off the SD card, 
pretty much every game I've tried plays perfectly. I mean, the screen looks amazing for this thing. The sound quality is good as well, too. I mean, you are limited with the Game Boy Advance right there, but overall, I have been impressed with it, and it's also a very comfortable controller. It's a very comfortable system overall, and I've enjoyed using it so far. Uh, now, when it comes to the other types of emulation, this is where I want to warn you all, because if you all are thinking, oh, I'll get a really awesome Game Boy Advance and a kick-ass emulator machine, Think twice on that. I've noticed many times it is hit or miss. There are some games, for example, like Super Mario World, plays great on there. You know, I tried it, it plays at 60 frames a second, it works out well enough. And there's many other games, most games, I I'll just put it like this. Don't buy this expecting it to be a kick-ass emulation machine. The emulation is there, it works well on some games, on most games from my experience, I haven't had good experiences with them, so you should really first and foremost get this if you want an alternative to the Game Boy Advance. Now some people might be asking why don't I just get a Game Boy Advance, and you totally can, but as I mentioned in the video earlier, what a lot of people like to do is they like to get a original Game Boy Advance and then LED backlight mod it and everything, uh, or LCD backlight mod it so they end up changing out the screen and then they make it so that it is backlit, because the original one in my opinion was more comfortable and I like that one more, but it does suffer because it doesn't have a backlit screen, although that does cost a good amount of money. Some people might also say, you know, if I'm just going to load up a bunch of ROMs on the go, because that is what I did with this thing, and it is very convenient, why don't you just get a flash cart? Well, you can, but like one of the most recommended, if not the most recommended flash cart, I'm looking at it right now, the EverDrive GBA X5 is a hundred dollars exactly 99 dollars actually that's before shipping that's before anything else so getting a flash card loan would run you about a hundred dollars plus you'd have to get the game boy plus you'd have to get other things while as this right here this is already a game boy and all you need is a micro sd card which you probably have laying around and it cost me ninety dollars and here's the thing for me i was not striving to go crazy and you know to modify a game boy advance or anything that's something i'll do for fun in the future but i went into this knowing it's like, yeah, this is going to be a clone product, I'd actually like to try this out, and it seems like it's doing pretty well. So, if you buy this as an alternative to a Game Boy Advance that's been modified with a flash cart, I would say for $90, you're doing pretty damn well right there, and I can give it my recommendation. However, as I said, don't expect a strong emulation side on there. Even on the Game Boy or the Game Boy Color, really, I mean, there were some games that played fine on the Game Boy, uh, but Game Boy Color stuff, you know, that's kind of hit and miss as well, too. So that's why I'm saying, emulation there as a bonus, just don't really rely on it and don't have that be your guiding thing to saying, oh, I'm just going to get this and I'll be happy with everything. No, you probably won't be. But for Game Boy Advance stuff, it's pretty nice. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you're interested in this or if you have this and you've tried it out, let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed the video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it and, I don't know, you just hate everything about Game Boy or just hate this thing in particular, a dislike is fine too.